Hi, good morning or good afternoon. Sorry about the delay. This is uh, Dr. Rao from Pain and Spine Specialists, and we're talking about Minuteman fusion today. The premise of this whole new procedure, a relatively new procedure, is more about looking at ways that we can uh, provide different types of treatments for patients who have chronic lower back pain. And um, the technology and the science uh, continues to change, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, over the last several years, our, our field in general is moving towards trying to become more interventional, less invasive overall. So the days of open, big uh, spine surgery is, uh, are, are few and far between, and uh, the interventional pain physicians as well as spinal surgeons across the country are getting together and coming up with new algorithms and new ways of treatment to get people feeling better, get them more functional, and with hopefully less invasive type of surgical procedures. In general, uh, patients who have back pain can have multiple different problems. They can have spinal stenosis, they can have degenerative disc disease, they can have disc herniations, they can have arthritis affecting the joints. They can have spondylolisthesis, which is the shifting of joints. They can have the sacroiliac joint getting affected. Uh, and all of these conditions can cause ongoing lower back pain. Some can give uh, leg pain as well. Our goal at pain and spine specialists is to try to figure out ways uh, to optimize your quality of life, improve your functionality and decrease pain. So this concept of bringing in uh, minimally invasive uh, procedures and offering them to you is, is a matter of, of seeing if there's other ways that we can get people feeling better with less, um, less invasive approaches. So traditional fusions uh, are significantly longer procedures in general. Sometimes they do require a overnight hospital stay or a couple of days and maybe even into a subacute rehab uh, facility. Uh, it's a larger incisions. Um, the back muscles, tendons, ligaments uh, get cut and have to be uh, mended together. There are increased risks of surgical complications and nerve damage that go with uh, open back surgery. And there's also a risk of blood loss. Next slide, please. The idea and concept of minimally invasive spinal surgery has been around for over a decade now. And the nice thing about that is that the technology continues to improve and uh, the access or insurance companies covering these types of procedures are continuing to improve as well. And the advantages of using a minimally invasive approach is you have a, a quicker procedure yeah, this may take 30 minutes. Um, these are outpatient surgical procedures that can be done in a surgery center or in a hospital. Uh, there's minimum amount of tissue disruption. So those uh, back muscles, ligaments, and tendons remain intact. That means your recovery time is significantly uh, advanced. It will be, uh, you'll be recovering from the surgery a lot quicker than a traditional back surgery. There's a lot less blood loss and potential complications. It's a small one, one and a half inch incision. And um, the concerning aspects of back surgery, which would be you know, damaging blood vessels or nerves are significantly limited by this approach altogether. Next slide. So who's a candidate? Next slide. In general, people with back pain. And um, you know, if you have back pain uh, that gets better when you sit, but gets, gets worse when you stand or walk, those are telltale signs for something called lumbar spinal stenosis. And that's really a fancy way of saying the, the spinal canal itself is getting more narrow. And if it's narrow, the nerves in the spinal canal have less uh, room to, to uh, send signals. And uh, this is a, a condition that can happen because you have uh, discs that are bulging back into a space. You have uh, arthritis affecting the joints on the sides of the space. You have a ligament in the back of the space altogether that just gets thicker. And these are, these are changes that happen over time. Uh, spinal stenosis doesn't occur overnight. It is something that happens over years, if not decades. But when it becomes symptomatic is when people start coming to the doctor to get looked at. And that's when we start getting x-rays and MRIs and, and evaluating what's actually causing the problem. So something we call the shopping cart sign is when patients bend forward, uh, lean forward, the pain gets better. So if you're using a walker or pushing a shopping cart, you say, hey, I can walk around the grocery store and I feel okay. It's that when I don't have those, uh, that, that crutch, uh, I feel a lot of heaviness in my legs. I feel a lot of weakness in my legs. I feel a lot of pain in my back as well. And th that's what uh, 
that's spinal stenosis in general. And this uh, Minuteman perfusion is uh, indicated for patients with lumbar spinal stenosis. And, and the reason for that is it, it basically opens up that space. Next slide. The original uh, FDA approval was for lumbar spinal stenosis. And then we realized that it, this will work and help patients with uh, degenerative disc disease, which is a, a very common uh, diagnosis for patients who have ongoing back and leg pain. So if your back uh, or leg uh, are painful and you haven't responded to over-the-counter medications, physical therapy, injections, then this may be an option. Uh, if your pain is worse when you're standing or walking, if it gets worse when you lay on your stomach, if um, it gets worse when you're weight-bearing, uh, when you're bending, lifting, or twisting, if you need the, the help of using a cane or a walker, if you've had balance issues and you find yourself falling sometimes because of pain, um, and if you notice that your posture is just uh, continues to be uh, just less, less, ide less than ideal because of pain, then this may be an option for you. Next slide. And lastly, spondylolisthesis is a very large word that's, that basically means the spine is unstable, meaning that the, there, there could be a fracture in, in parts of the spine that, la, that allow for the bones themselves to shift. And when they shift, they can cause nerve irritation and inflammation, and that can give you a lot of pain, numbness, and tingling as well. Um, with these types of conditions, uh, you have pain that can be aggravated with different types of positional changes. You can have increased pain with activity. It is not always as consistent as the other types of pain. Uh, we, we do recommend bracing to keep things in better uh, place. And um, we notice that um, the gait or your stride length does change because of the instability. Uh, balance continues to be an issue. And you may have um, traditional leg pain, weakness, numbness, and tingling, just like we've discussed in the other conditions. Next slide, please. So what do, what do people usually complain about when they come to see us who may be a, a candidate for this? I can't sit or stand for too long. It takes me a while to get going in the morning. I can't sit for more than a few hours, if not even less. It's very difficult for me to get out of a chair. Uh, my legs feel heavy. My legs feel numb. I haven't been able to walk through a store in a very long time. I have difficulty getting the mail from the, uh, from the post box. I have difficulty putting on my shoes and socks. I have to sleep in a recliner. I can't push uh, things that I normally would, like a lawnmower, and or you know I threw my back out, and that usually is uh, the one that gets people start going to their doctor to begin with. And traditionally, you go to your primary care doctor; they'll evaluate you, they'll give you some anti-inflammatory medications, maybe a muscle relaxant. If it doesn't get better, then they'll send you to physical therapy for a month or two. If it doesn't get better, then they may actually send you to a spine surgeon. And we, we would make the argument that, you know, spine surgeons, um, I think they operate on probably less than 10% of the patients that actually come to them. And the other patients will recommend physical therapy, medications, or go seeing a pain specialist. So part of what we talk to our referring uh, colleagues is that uh, interventional pain management physicians are, uh, uh, can be the gatekeeper on how to treat these patients and get them the care they need as quickly as possible. So after physical therapy doesn't improve uh, the back pain when you threw your back out, then coming to see a pain specialist is probably the next best step because we can then order an MRI, we can review the MRI, discuss injection therapy, and discuss some of these minimally invasive spine surgeries or, or, and or uh, discuss a, a surgical spine referral. Next slide. So, this is how we think about how we should be managing pain and lower back pain in general. So if you've had lower back pain and it hasn't gotten better in say four to eight weeks, then you, you'll end up coming to a pain specialist or you'll go to a spine surgeon. Um, and depending on the underlying issue, we may recommend an epidural steroid injection to decrease the inflammation and irritation around the nerves. We may end up doing something called a radiofrequency ablation, which is a way to treat the arthritis-related pain that's causing muscle spasms. We would recommend medications, physical therapy. Now, if all of these modalities do not provide relief, so if there's no clinical response, but there is some relief when you uh, bend forward, then the Minuteman procedure may be something to consider. 
if there is no response to these other treatments, but there is no relief uh, when you beat bend forward, this is probably not the best fit for you. We would have to then start looking at what else could be causing the pain. Now, if the injections and physical therapy and medications do give you a good response, that's fantastic. And if the response lasts for more than three months or so, even better, if it does return, then we can consider at re repeating these modalities that helped. However, if the response gave you less than three months of relief, and we see these with patients, we see that you know the first round of epidural steroid injections several years ago did help. The radiofrequency ablations uh, were helping, they were lasting. And unfortunately, over time, the underlying problem affecting the spine is probably getting worse. And therefore, the, the treatments that we traditionally provide are not helping. And um, the Miniman procedure may be an option for those types of patients as well. Next slide. So the procedure itself is uh, a fairly quick, it's a minimally invasive uh, procedure. And uh, the nice thing about it is that we use what's called a lateral approach, which means we go in just off, uh, we go in from the side. And that's different than doing a posterior approach or going in through the back muscles themselves. And by going through the side, you end up saving those back muscles, those ligaments and structures that give us the support to hold up our back and um, hopefully cause less back pain. The other nice thing about this pr procedure is that it is far away, relatively speaking, far away from the blood vessels and the nerve structures that we are very concerned about with back surgery. So it is a very safe procedure because those other um, structures are not gonna get uh, manipulated and will be very far away from those. But what ha essentially happens is we place a device in between the spinous processes, these the bones in the lower back that stick out. And by doing so, you actually create more space. And for patients with spinal stenosis, this is what you need. You need to have more space for those nerves to get less irritated. But for patients who have degenerative disc disease, then not only is the space important, but you need to be able to provide more stability. So if you have spondylolisthesis where you have some instability or you have degenerative disc disease where the discs themselves are gotten so um, worn out that there is instability that develops, then uh, causing a fusion and allowing those bones to grow and stabilize the spine in a minimally invasive option is, is great because you're able to get the relief that you're looking for and get the functional improvement. So this is a quick uh, overview of the Miniman procedure uh, with, you know, we're discussing a little bit about minimally invasive spine procedures in general. Uh, our practice at Pain and Spine Specialists, we're trying, we continue to look for um, cutting edge technology, cutting edge therapeutics that can provide alternative treatments to, for our patients and, and get people feeling better. If this sounds like it's something you're interested in learning more about, then by all means, uh, when you come in next, uh, please give us, uh, bring it up and uh, one of our physicians or providers can discuss it with you. Uh, if you're not an active patient and you're interested, then uh, feel free to call and make an appointment. Thank you very much for your time and uh, have a great day.